Hello, this is the reading of the first chapter of the book Clothers May Pop Beyond the Clouds. Before I begin, don't forget to subscribe to the channel Stapaoli Azul and Super Academico and ring the bell for, notification for notifications for new videos. And uh, share this video, comments if you like, and take a look at the description for the other contents that we have. So let's go. Clothers Mary Pop Beyond the Cloud, Chapter 1 A Blog and a Summer Log. The city I live in is like any city. There are people, buildings, workers, and students. I am one of the elementary, elementary school students. I study in a very well respected private school, and my parents work very hard so I can be there. Many important people also keep their kids there, or at least they try. The level of demand is great, and not everyone can keep up. We also have traffic, beaches, and many malls, the meeting point for fun of my generation. In fact, it is an inheritance of the previous generation, because mine meets itself to the digital world, the famous internet, cloud, which connects servers around the world and connects people, information and everything else that gives life meaning for our 21st century world. That's why they call us clodders, an English expression that derives from the cloud clouds in use now on every other language there is. Notes. Like many other English words, everyone takes it from the way it came, like the word internet itself. That summer brought new things to the school life and my too. Cool and smart girls like me should not think about it but I could not help noticing his perfect skin face coming through the door of our classroom. A sad and penetrating look that captivated me in its entirety. The new boy who arrived in the city and our school coming from not far away, wrapped in mystery and unexpectedly exchanging glances with me. Who could have imagined that? I, who barely appeared on the center of conversations, who would sit in a corner with some friends and concentrate on my students, studies, studies, catching the attention of that handsome boy. Mary is my name and being a blogger was my bit. I hope it does not disappoint you, dear readers, but this introduction is just my way of speaking about a special moment for me, but under the effect of the first Twilight Saga movie. I was 14 years old and I had watched the movie about 5 times. I posted my review of it on my blog and I was with Edward Cullen in my head as a male beauty model. Notes: This is was before the second movie, New Moon, debuting, debuting, <laughs> and showing that Jacob was much cuter. Then, returning to the entrance of Marcos Freitas in the classroom that day, he walked slowly, with a mixture of shyness and indifference to everything. His, his piercing gaze met mine from time to time and I felt like Bella, as if crossed over by fate to keep that figure out of the sweetest romances. But the reality of school life came back to remind me that movies are movies. Mary, did you do the work I asked for? Asked the literature teacher. Yes, I did and the days passed by. 
our school was considered one of the top 10 schools in the state. The standard test scores were always good. I guess that's why we always had new students trying to get into it. Marcos Freitas was the new student of that season, but it would not be like all the others that had already appeared in our previous classes. One of the trends that guarantee the quality of our school is the demand from our, our teachers that charge us the fulfillment of many tasks. It may seem contradictory, but the more flexible is the school with the rules with the students, the more it tends to have young people without self-control. Our families are keen to put us in a school where the rules are met. This force us, forces us to study and much, otherwise we are invited to change schools. After two weeks since Marcos Freitas joined the class, an incident eventually got his attention for everyone in the class, far beyond his appearance to the girls. Being a little older, he also got attention from the boys in the class who wanted him in their various groups. He had been late for the science teacher's class. Upon entering the room without, without asking permission and sitting in the back, the teacher came to have it out with him. Aren't you going to ask permission to enter the room, Mr. Marcos? Sorry, teacher. I didn't want to interrupt your explanation on evolution theory. Oh, so you know what I was talking about. Yes, I know. Natural selection and mutation. That's right. I hope this doesn't happen again. No delays for my class. She turns to continue the lesson and he glances around with some satisfaction. I felt him stop and look at I felt him stop and look at and looking a few more seconds at me. In the break time there was no mention of everything of anything else. The Novas <laughs> Nova. The new student had been able to face the great doctor of science. All this so strict with everyone about deadlines, punctuality and discipline, she ended up she ended up having to bend over to Marcus' arguments when he was asked about the delay and discreet entry into the room. He seemed unshakable in the face of the situation of the situation. It did not seem normal for a young man of that age to be so sure of himself. This only added to the mystery surrounding him, which declined further in the following days as he began to walk with the other boys of the class and seemed to be just another one. However, those apparent aspects, those apparent aspects of his personality would be essential for the understanding of what was to come in our lives. Note, more days pass by and the girls start talking about Marcos more and more often. It seemed like soon enough some of them would hook the new guy. Who would it be? Teenage blogs was not yet a fever at the time. Today you just need to access any larger media portal online and they have a lot of young blogs talking to young people on the most diverse subjects. Dating, work, school, drugs, movies, books, sex, politics, travel, advice and even bullying. Curiously, the interest of people of my age at that time for reading blogs has changed a lot because today everyone already has a sex access to the high-speed mobile internet. Today is the era of smartphones and teen stars 
are the YouTubers, but at that time it was still an alternative, novelty, something rebellious for free expression of young opinions. My blog was not revolutionary at all, it was just to share things of common interest to us, uh, to us all. In the case of films and reviews, it was very timely. I was lucky and I think I'm a bit talented to write so attractively to guys is in my age at the time. I would never have imagined that uh, the effects it would be would have in my future. The effect it would have in my future future. Future and much less for all the people in the world too. Note, it may seem pretentious to say this now, but it will soon become clearer. Returning to my blog, strange moments, strange comments began to appear about a kind of a ghost that appeared and appeared in several schools and in various classrooms in the city, all because of my review of the Twilight movie. I did not really care about that at the moment because I was more interested in getting to know Marcus a little better. We formed some study groups in geography class. The teacher's objective was objective was for each team to present some physical, economical and social data, data from different regions of the country. My group stayed with the South region and we met over the course of a week to get the job done. It was a very nice socialization opportunity because the teacher made, the mis made a mixture in the teams to avoid the vicious cliques were formed. All teachers always say that it's important to vary who you work with because in the professional life there is not much choice about who we, we work with. At first some people were surprised to be in a company of a little known colleagues but we ended up, ended up getting to know each other. In particular, of course, I had the luck and opportunity to be in the same team with Marcos. We knew that geographic and social economic information about the South region very well. I even asked if he was from there, since there was no identifiable accent from any part of the country of him, on him. I still didn't know why that happened to him. Now I know. So during that week, we were able to get to know each other a bit better both of us and the rest of the team too, but very focused on the content of the work. Our school was very demanding about the students' performance, so we always dedicate ourselves a lot. Anyway, we had already created a small loop beyond the exchange of looks that was about to become stronger, everything because of my blog. Fridays are the best days of the week during the school time because there are always the preludes to the weekend with lots of mall movies, of mall movies, games, parties, and for me a lot of reading and also a lot of add, a lot to add to my blog. Besides, on the particular Friday, on that particular Friday. There was something more fascinating still going on in the class. Marcus already had gotten in with some of the boys in the room, so we, so he was more at ease, and the air of mystery had faded a little. The group work during the week before had helped, and the exchanges of look with me became more familiar. A curiosity on that day was that a news story about electrical disturbances appeared to the city in the, in the previous week. 
I personally had not realized. After all, the blackouts of energy were always happening at dawn, and I was already asleep. However, I had heard my parents say something about it, and on this last night, there had been very intense events in some parts of the city. Even the colleagues were commenting on from light bulbs exploding out of nowhere to sudden blockouts, blackouts, and overloads in some houses. They had not discovered the possible cause of the disturbances, but it seems to have generated a kind of a general concern in part of the town's population. Note, it's not usual for me to care about such news, but it was very strange. Moreover, moreover the event will prove important to our story later. The day before, at break time, I was at the cafeteria with some colleagues talking about what we would do for the weekend. It was too early in the school year, so there was not so much to study. So there was still room for some fun. Note, from the seventh grade onwards, everything is getting worse and worse with more and more subjects and more and more tasks. So advice, study, so we can at least have some free time at the end of the year. Marcus came to us still with that mysterious air, but having already gotten in a little bit with other boys, other boys, he could look more closely at the girls and show more confidence as well. Of course, part of the confidence must come from the fact that he knew how handsome he was. After all, he should have some mirror in the house. <laughs> and we done that geography work together during the week before. Despite the exchange of glances with me during all those weeks, I never imagined that he would come and talk to me among the other girls. I thought that I thought he was coming to talk to Patricia or Deborah. After all, they fit the beauty model of the moment. Straight blondes with well-developed bodies, although they were barely 14 years old. But no, he came directly to speak to me among them. He passed them both as if they did not even exist, which made them half jealous and addressed to me addressed me. The brunette still a bit shallow but always standing out with the grades and the blog of course. Hi Mary. Hi Marcus. Any problem? Are you the Mary Pop from the blog? Yeah, it's me. You know? Yes, I follow your blog. It's really cool. Thanks. The girls began to distance themselves from our conversation. They started talking about other things and we stayed in hours. In hours. He said he was a movie fan and that he was very fond of my critics, my reviews, who were very different from the professional critics who always said, always said, standard things and did not know how to speak to younger audiences who like to identify with movies, sagas and characters characters in a more personal way. I was so I was also suspicious that he could have changed schools because he was interested in my posts about our events. But it was too much pretense. I thought so. My intention was to involve my classmates with things I consider interesting. Study groups, leisure tips, reviews of movies and books, class summaries and photos galleries. I started to expand when I noticed that I had about 1000 views a day. From diverse origins, origins and locations I noticed that the subjects 
were of much greater interest that than to my classmates, especially the reviews of fashion films. I remember that the movie review I had most views and exploded from comments was Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. I think the atmosphere of adolescent dating in the midst, midst of the Triwizard Tournament captivated hearts and it was in this aspect that I concentrated the courtship. Notes Robert Pattinson, the actor who played the role of Edward the Vampire in Twilight, Twilight, Twilight is also in this Harry Potter, Harry Potter episode. He is the wizard, uh, wizard who dies at the end of the movie. Sorry for the spoiler, I didn't watch that. We talked for all the time of the break and there was an immediate connection between us. The conversation followed easy as if we had known each other long ago, all because of our common interest in films and fantasy. At one point I found it strange that he seemed to know so much about me, but I remember that in my blog there was a lot of expression of myself. I always end up making connections between the commented movies and my life or colleagues. This was the basic tenets of his popularity among the young. He started hitting if we could not see some movie together that he would even help in the reviewing. I was, I was finding it all very nice since he was a handsome boy after all and it was r rare for them to be so interested in me. This strangeness was starting to bother me. The break was over and we still talked a little more going towards the classroom. We stopped talking about each other and see if we could go to the movies together. He did not insist but he wanted to make it clear that he insisted on going with me. <laughs> Still feeling on the, top of the my, uh, on the top of myself, I sat down under the curious glance of my class, my closest classmates. Leaving school later, I could see Marcus helping a lady carrying shop bags around. It was a simple act, but it showed him how much he seemed to be someone with attention and care for others. Much of my suspicions have lost strain because among my current classmates I had never seen anyone help a stranger in the street, especially the elderly. It was as if Marcos had come out from a different age or a different country. My cell phone started buzzing. Until the beginning of the night my cell phone was always accusing new text messages or missed calls. Most of them girls wondering what what went on and what was still going to go with Marcus. In most of the answers I gave only evasive for he did not even know what he could really ask. To my closest friends I showed that I really liked the attention that he gave me but I was afraid of one of that whole interest to have some obscure motive. When the night was set and I had my duties to fulfill, to study a little and to write on the blog, I noticed a certain confusion in my mind about what I should write that day. I usually talk about the day-to-day -day school amenities when there was no movie or book or new song to comment or in, in review, but that day I just want to talk about Marcos. Right in that moment I was with him in my mind, in front of the computer to start writing. The cell vibrates and informs a new message. It was him. His words were, okay, what are you doing? I hesitate a lot about what and how to answer that question. Finally I replied, 
updating my blog. Oh, cool. Let me turn on my computer and accompany you. Accompany you. It's all right. We hang up. And now, what would I do? So I start reading the comments from my previous posts. I notice the constant mention of a strange apparition. In various places of the city of a figure, figure very similar to the vampire Edward. And at the same time, I had lost all praise for the Twilight, Twilight movie and my review of it. Then came the idea. Mary Pop blog post on February 12, 2009. Well, friends, I have a news bomb for you. The strange appearance of the vampire Edward that you reported is not really an apparition. He came to my school this week and is attending classes every day. Nobody knows yet, but he came in secret from a land far away with a mysterious and shadowy air to find out what normal teenagers are like. His appearance comes from the Nordic regions. That's why he's so white and pale not a vampire and told me in secret that he loves my blog that's why he decided to migrate to our country and our city in order to get to know us to know me too nothing is going on yet my people but soon i will have more news to tell kisses from everyone Mary Pop. A few minutes passed and the phone rang again. It was Marcos again. Hi Mary. Interesting post. You think so? Do you know this guy? Who? Oh, the Prince of Nordic Regions. Ah <laughs> laughs. I just invented it to keep the mood of the mystery as so many people decide to comment on the Twilight review by saying that so a ghost like Edward oh I know I have not seen this movie yet but I found your review very well written would you like to go with me and watch it again? laughs of course it would be my fourth time I would also love your company it's alright we can meet at the mall on Sunday afternoon. Okay. It's marked with me. For me. It's marked for me. After we hang up, I could finally breathe in relief that he did not realize that the post was about himself and that I was also feeling the excitement of our meeting for the next day. Next day? It's Sunday. It would not be my first date with a boy, but it would be the first with a really interesting one. After a few, few hours, I was studying biology at that time. I realized that something else had happened in the phone call and in my blog post. Marcos did not even bother to invite me out. His tone of admiration for, Simi, for me seemed to become an easy breach. I think I underestimate his ability to read between the lines of my post. Was he getting cocky? For a moment I wondered if he would not be able to read thoughts as well as the vampire Edward. I was afraid to look so transparent to a boy I hardly knew. Also I was reflecting on my on people's comments on the blog. Although I took advantage of the message to speak indirectly of Marcos' arrival at my school, I remember that the comments were quite tense, as if a little panic was taking over the blog readers on the possibility of having a beautiful and pale vampire running around the city schools in search of a victim to fall into his arms. I had <laughs> been exactly my discovery. It had been exactly my description of the situation in the field. I dropped the book and I opened the blog again. I counted the amount of hits and comments about the movie Twilight. 
there were 2,300 hits and 67 comments, excluding indirect comments that comment comments. Then I saw the new posts had also been assessed 200 times and that in the comments there was the following. Uh, I also saw him, Eddie. It's not it's no ghost, but seems to be floating around you. <laughs> you are very lucky. So you brought him there? Smart ass. <laughs> Mary, beware that he will beat your neck. Oh, that envy. Are you going to have a vampire romance in the tropics? And that was where the comments went. I was read of with shame and even though I was alone in my room, unintentionally I ended up hand, handing the game to everyone. It was obvious that Marcos understood too. He would be a great he would be a great kid in school. The circuit of the city schools would know what could be worse. At this moment, a new comment appears on the blog. It said, Maybe I'm not the vampire Edward, and I'm not your new colleague Marcus, but someday you know who I am. My legs trembled, trembled, and I swelled hard. Sorry. What did that mean? My mother knocked at the door. I jumped in alarm. Mary, are you still up on this computer? She came into the room and did not see me completely amazed at the situation, but I noticed something was different. What is it, Mary? Mother, I hesitate a little. I think my blog is attracting very strange people. What do you mean, Kiro? Come see. She approached and saw the comment, comment featured on the screen. She thought for a while and said, Mary, you are responsible and intelligent. You know that this world, world has people of all kinds, so if you think you are putting yourself in danger with this blog, just deactivate it. Not mom, I took too long to build my reputation as a blogger. And is that worth your safety and peace of mind? Think about it. Okay. Turn that thing off and go to sleep. She gave the order. As she left the room, she would surely tell my father about the situation, but I did not care. I had an honest relationship with my parents and I knew I could count on them as a tale to this day. I obeyed and hang up. My dreams that night were a great mixture of images between the fear for the strange comments on the blog and the whole situation with Marcos. And that's chapter one for now. So I hope you enjoy. Don't forget to subscribe to the channels, ring the bell for notifications and give the like. Give the like. Comments and um, take a look at the description. See you next time. Bye-bye.